So today we are talking about a native feature inside of your G Suite Google Calendar that when I found out about it, my head nearly exploded out of excitement for what this could mean for small business owners who are just getting started out, just trying to figure out the systems that they need. So let's talk about it. I'm Lauren with The Smarter Creative and I'm helping creative small business owners work smarter in their business instead of harder. I am so grateful you are here committed to helping your business work smarter rather than harder. So inside of your Google G Suite account, so this is if you you have a custom domain and you've chosen to run your email through Google. So you had to set up a this account, a Google account through G Suite or whatever they're calling it now. I don't know, the names change. But if that is you, so you have your like hello at custom domain or I have like Lauren at the smarter creative dot com, like that custom, not an at Gmail email, not that, but a custom name. If you have that, you pay for that to be able to have your email hosted through Google. So this is a feature that is included in that. And it is appointment scheduling. It's where you can send a link to your appointment scheduler or multiples to a client or a lead to have them book a call directly with you. A call, a Google Meet or video link, whatever, an in-person meetup, whatever it is, you can have people book directly with you. You can even use this for like, mini sessions getting booked if people need to like select times for you just saying there's lots of uses for this and a lot of times i encourage people when they're getting started out if you're not quite ready for the full crm the full dubsado the full honeybook you're just not there yet one of the things that's really helpful are these calendar schedulers where you and your client or your lead do not have to go back and forth via email to try to find a time that works well for the both of you so usually i recommend a calendly which has a free option for like one call type so you can have a calendly link it has one call type and it's great and it's free. We all want free, right? Especially when we're getting started out. But if you are already paying for your G Suite, I say don't even bother with the Calendly and use this instead because it will streamline your overall processes. It's one less program to log into. If you are a Dubsado or a HoneyBook user and you do your scheduling inside of that program, this will not apply to you unless you have some like weird one-off thing where you want to be able to like grab coffee with somebody but you don't want them inside of your CRM, then this would work for you. So I'm gonna stop talking about it and I'm just gonna get in and show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I want to hit on is what's available on what Google Workspace plan. Google Workspace used to be called G Suite or G, anyways, it doesn't matter. It's Google Workspace now. The business starter is what I have for one of my, a couple of my businesses. And then the business standard is what I use for the Smarter Creative. And I'm going to be using the business standard for the options with this booking. Why I really like having this upgraded one is obviously the two terabytes of storage per user is huge. And then if we scroll down a just a couple use cases of why I like this, and I don't get a cut for anything. I'm just saying my piece is I record my calls with my clients and I have some more options when it comes to my Google Meet things. So I can do Q&A, my meeting recordings are automatically saved to my Google Drive. I can do breakout rooms, there's hand raisings allowed all inside of that package. And then here under calendar, we have this appointment booking page which is available in that $12 spot, but not in that $6 spot. So those to me are like two big reasons why I can use my $12, I can replace Zoom in some of those Zoom options that Google Meet can do, and I can replace Calendly for most of my booking pages. I know I do use Dubsado for clients who need to book me or if I'm doing any paid bookings, but sometimes I have people that reach out either past clients who I just want to be like, hey, let's just like talk for 15, 20 minutes, just find a time on my calendar and book it. And like, let's just, we'll just chat. So that is why I like these booking pages. So let's go over to my calendar here. And if I go to create, I can create a appointment schedule. 
And then this is where the fancy dancy things come into play. So we can call it something. So we could say, I'll call it Lauren, and then I only want it to be 15 minutes to define it. Let's say I don't want anything on Monday, I don't want anything on Friday, and I don't want anything on Wednesdays, and I don't want to, I can available, let's say I'm available 9 to 11, and 1 to 3, perfect. And then maybe Thursday, I'm just open all day for spots. And then here is our scheduling window. So we could set a start and end time in the future. Let's say we are wanting to book calls specifically on a day or a week in December, depending on your use case for this, you can change that and you can have a start and end time for it. And then here we have the maximum time in advance an appointment can be booked. So Especially if you have start and end date, it's not really applicable, but this is if you don't, like it's an ongoing chat, someone can only go so far out in your calendar to book. I would highly recommend like decreasing this to like 20 days or 30 days or 15 days, whatever you're most comfortable with, because at least for me, I don't really, I'm not paying that much attention out into the future of like making sure I'm blocking for my holidays. Like I only work like a week or two in advance. So I don't want anybody booking beyond that. And then here's like the maximum time before the appointment start that it can be booked. Mainly if it is noon on Wednesday, when is the next time they can book an appointment? Is it 24 hours, which would be noon on Thursday. I have mine set right now for four hours. So that would be if it's noon on Wednesday, I need a four hour buffer. So they couldn't book anything until after 4 p.m. on Wednesday. And I don't have any Wednesday availability. So they would see my full Thursday availability. So for right now, let's just make it like 12 hours. But you could do 36 hours, you could do 72 hours, like depending on how you work and how much time you need for someone to pop onto your calendar. It's really how flexible your days are for that. And then if you have like a specific dates availability that you want to adjust the hours available, you can do it in here, but you can also do it like you can block it out on your calendar as well. But let's say you're using both this calendar for some calls and then you are using like your Dubsado for client calls. So you don't want to block your calendar because you are open to having like lead calls come in on Friday morning, but you but that's all you're willing to sacrifice your Friday morning for. You don't want these pop-up calls available. So unlike Friday the 24th, whatever, you could come in and adjust you know, your date of what is available on that specific day. So let's say Thursday, I know that's Thanksgiving, but we're just gonna, in the US, we're just gonna go with it. Let's say we're only available 12 to five on the 24th. And you can continue to add more of, you can just say, nope, all day I'm not available. You can add another period to that day. So maybe it's like nine to 10, 12 to five. And then here in these appointment, booked appointment settings are the buffer time. So add a time between slots. So I would say, I would like maybe like 30 minutes. So they would only see it like on the 45 or maybe even since it's only a 15 minute, they're allowed to book at the top of the hour. Otherwise I could do 15 minutes and then they would be able to book at the top of the hour and the half hour. So there'd be multiple times like in that section that they could, they'd be able to book a time slot for. And then you can say like how many bookings a day you want to take. So let's say you don't want to really hop on more than two of these calls in the given day. So as soon as two people plan for that day, it would not go through. And then you can always change the color of this guy here. Go next. You can have a booking photo and name. So you'll see how it is displayed and you can always manage your account photo and name here. And then you can choose a location. So you can automatically choose your Google Meet, a in-person meeting. Let's say you like meet at a specific coffee shop or you have an office, you can put that address here. Phone call, make sure like they give their phone number. And then if you want to just like update it later, depending on who's booked you, you can do that there. For this, I'm gonna say it's a phone call. And then our description here, it could be, go ahead and find a time to have a quick call 
with Lauren. And then the booking form obviously automatically requires first name, last name, email. Phone number mayor is only on there automatically because I chose phone call here, but you can always add it. And any item, custom item, and you can just like name what it is. So let's say company name, maybe topic to discuss. And this is required email verification. So they'd have to actually like confirm their email to book um, people who aren't signed into a Google email. They'd have to actually confirm their booking. I personally am not worried about that just yet, but if I were getting like weird people coming through, I would probably turn that on. And then we got booking confirmations and reminders. So automatically our confirmation email is going to go out and then you have options with email reminders. You can add multiples of them. They are static. You can't update, but if you want it like 30 minutes before the reminder and you can add another one. So maybe it's the day before and 30 minutes before and those are all your settings. And then we're going to hit save and now we can share it and we get either a website embed code where we can actually like put it in either a button with a pop-up, which is super cool. So like you click on that book an appointment and your call booking shows up here, or you can just like straight embed it into your website here, the inline booking page. You can embed here and it would be like your actual calendar. The options here, all appointment schedules, this is going to be if you have multiple um, bookings. So I have like a 30 minute video call. I have a 15 minute call and like they could choose either one of those in order to book that. And then you also have the link. So you can share that link with somebody to all of your meetings, or if you just want to share your 15 minute call, that's going to be this booking link. You can just copy link and it's on your clipboard done and then you can even book it to see it open here so now I have my 15 minute call with Lauren and I can see where those spots are on my calendar once somebody actually books it it will show up on your calendar as an appointment and then when you click into your thing you can see all of the different ones you have created and your Google is smart enough to not give so this 15 minute call because I have a 12 hour notification, but let's edit this and let's say scheduling window. Like I don't need any buffer time here. So let's go ahead and hit next and save. All right. And I'll refresh here. So I should have appointments for today now. Awesome. So I have a meeting right now at two 30 or two o'clock it's coming up. So that is blocked on my calendar as well as I know Tuesday next week, I have a 10 o'clock appointment that's blocked out some of these time slots. So it's going to look at what else you have scheduled and if it's busy or available, it'll block your calendar automatically. And then all you got to do is yeah, share that little 15 minute calendar. I'm going to share it again copy this link and then you can text it to anybody to book the to book the call with you and it's super easy the things I'll say about it is you can't collect payment on this so let's say you wanted to do like mini photo sessions and so on December the 4th you have all day slots you have 15 minute slots they're available every 15 minutes for four hours and people can book them but so you can use this to have them book it, but then you still have to collect money from them to pay for it. So then you could send them over an invoice either directly through Stripe or PayPal, or you could be, I would highly encourage you just to do it inside of Dubsado so you can automate everything, but sometimes you got to work with what you got. And this is an awesome option to easily book calls with clients. And I want to make sure you knew about it. Okay. If that was super helpful. I need a thumbs up from you right now for this video. Tell me you liked it. Tell me you enjoyed it. Tell me it 
helped. I love to know. I put videos out every week because I want to be helpful to you all. And I, I love helping small businesses in their messy backend systems and get them organized. That's what I do. If that is you, if you are a mess and you are watching video after video after video, trying to figure out how to not be a mess, schedule a free clarity call with me down below. I would love to help you inside of your business. Whatever that means for you, I am a Dubzato pro, but I work with all kinds of systems to help you be running better inside of your business. If you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to my channel. Next week, I am talking about how to set your business up for success so you can go on vacation well, so get that time off, subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications, and I will see you guys next week.